in abnormalities in nuclear maturation can be due to folic acid, B12, uh, thiamine responsive, uh, megaloblastic anemia, etc. So, uh, you can have diseases which are not that common in the pediatric age group, that is uh, dyserythropoietic anemia, or it would be due to uh, protoporphyria, etc. Then uh, you can have increased destruction of the RBCs, which could be, uh, which is classified as hemolytic anemias, and uh, 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 they can be due to defects in the hemoglobin, which can be structural mutants or synthetic mutants. For example, if there's decreased production due to some reason, then these are known as thalassemia uh, syndromes, and structural mutants are in the form of HBS, C, et cetera. Uh, defects in the red cell membrane, like, uh, uh, you know, uh, your uh, elliptocytosis, uh, spherocytosis, etc. Uh, antibody mediated uh, uh, destruction, with, like in autoimmune hemolytic anemia. You can have mechanical injury to the erythrocytes in the form of uh, destruction by the uh, artificial uh, valves, etc. Thermal injury to the erythrocyte can be there and so on and so forth. Uh, most important is in injury to the red blood cells due to infections, because these are the commonest ones which you come across. Then you can have paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobin nigeria, et cetera. Now, when we are looking at uh, uh, the size of the RBCs, you can have a sort of a structural uh, or uh, classification also. Uh, for example, if your RBCs are of normal size and normal shape, they are known as normocytic uh, anemias. If your RBCs are small in size, and uh, they are known, they'll be known as microcytic anemias. Whereas if you have anemia with large RBCs, they will be taken as macrocytic anemias. So if you have uh, low RBCs with a normal RDW, uh, it can be due to uh, alpha and beta thalassemia. There is high RDW seen in iron deficiency uh, and in some of the hemolytic anemias like uh, sickle beta and beta thalassemia or XVH disease. If you have normal MCV with anemia and normal uh, RDW, this is seen in patients of lead poisoning, etc. Uh, uh, in early iron deficiency also, you can have a no, uh, normocytic picture. High RDW is seen with a lot of, uh, you know, uh, mixed deficiencies like B12 and uh, folic acid with iron deficiency or what we call as uh, dimorphic anemia. You can have it in other conditions also. High R, uh, RDW with a normal, uh, sorry, uh, high MCB with a normal RDW is seen with uh, aplastic uh, anemia. Whereas, B12 will cause high RDW with a, a high uh, MCV. So if you look at it very closely, all conditions which cause a nutritional anemia will cause high RDW, which means that nutritional anemia with microcytic picture is iron deficiency. Nutritional anemia with normocytic uh, or uh, you know normal MCV will be taken as diamorphic anemia. And similarly, high uh, RDW with high uh, MCV is folic acid and B12. Of course, hemolytic anemias will cause a high RDW in all these uh, different categories. Now, uh, what happens is that iron um, uh, leads to formation of heme with the help of protopyrin. And if there's a defect in the protopyrin, uh, uh, you know, metabolism, then it leads to sideroblastic anemia. Whereas if there is a, a defect in the iron uh, incorporation, which could be due to uh, deficiency, or it could be an incorporation defect, which happens with chronic inflammation and malignancy, then also heme formation is less. If there is a problem, then heme combines with globin. And if there's a problem with the uh, production of uh, globin, which may be in the form of decreased production of alpha or beta, uh, genes, uh, uh, chains, then also it will lead to decreased hemoglobin. And that is what happens with 
uh, a lot of patients of our thalassemia. So, uh, all, and don't forget that uh, when you are seeing the purple smear, your RBCs are slightly smaller than the uh, small lymphocytes. That's how we come to know what is the size of the uh, RBCs. Now, when we look at, uh, uh, you know, microcytic hypochromic picture, uh, then uh, one has to look at uh, patients with iron deficiency anemia. One thing is that you look at iron deficiency anemia in which there is microcytosis and uh, and along with that, there is decrease. You know, the basic difference between thalassemia trait and iron deficiency, which are the commonest causes of iron uh, microcytic hypochromic picture, is that in iron deficiency anemia, the, the amount of hemoglobin fall, the fall in the RBCs and the MCV is concomitant. That means it is the same as that of hemoglobin fall. Whereas in thalassemia trait, if there is a fall in hemoglobin, then there is the, the size of the RBCs are discordant. That means they're uh, unusually smaller uh, than the uh, size expected with that fall in hemoglobin. And since they are smaller in size, we get a rise in the uh, RBC count. And so you have a fall in hemoglobin with a discordant fall in um, size of the RBCs and a discordant increase in the number of these RBCs. That's how we differentiate between thalassemia trait and in and uh, iron deficiency from the uh, peripheral smear. Uh, in chronic anemia, usually chronic uh, anemia of chronic disease usually starts as a normocytic normochromic picture. And then as time progresses, it goes on to a microcytic picture. So the converse of iron deficiency or converse of uh, uh, thalassemia trait happens in uh, iron deficiency uh, anemia, in uh, anemia of chronic disease. In that, uh, since there is initially a normocytic normal picture, uh, normal chromic picture, the fall in the MCV is not as much as you would expect with the fall in hemoglobin. If the RBCs are larger in size, you need less RBCs. So uh, the fall in RBC count is more than what you would expect from the uh, uh, this thing. So that's how we differentiate between various types of um, this thing. Now, coming to macrocytic anemia, in macrocytic anemia, what we have to see is that the RBCs are larger than the small lymphocytes. They are with uh, uh, the central pallor, which is usually one third the size of the RBCs, is almost obliterated. And if you look at the neutrophils, you'll find that the lot of uh, the nucleus is having a lot of lobules. Now, why does that happen? It happens because there is a defect in the synthesis of the DNA because of deficiency of B12 or folic acid. And because of the defect in the synthesis of DNA, the cell enlarges as it does for any other condition. And the nucleus also enlarges prior to division, but the division does not take place. So you have a larger cell with a lot of material in it, a lot of nuclear material in it, and that nuclear material leads to increased uh, lobulation uh, and so on and so forth. So if you have a macrocytic anemia with hyperbilirubinemia, with, uh, uh, you, know, uh, you can have uh, both megaloblastic anemia as well as uh, you know, uh, hemolytic anemia. If you have uh, uh, mild hyperbilirubinemia with uh, megaloblastosis, the chances are that it will be a folic acid or B12 deficiency and you can make a diagnosis with the help of uh, other features of these conditions. And if you have, a, uh, you know, no, um, if you have, along with that, if you have increase in reticulocytes, then we have to think of a hemolytic anemia. Don't forget that reticulocytes are again non-nucleated cells and they have a larger, they are larger cells than uh, normal RBCs. And your MCV may be increased even in hemolytic anemia because of the presence of a whole lot of uh, uh, reticulocytes in the peripheral smear. 
Now, causes of a normocytic anemia, this is a very important uh, area. Because if you have a normocytic anemia, then one has to think of systemic diseases or sinister causes of uh, causes leading to anemia. So when I get a patient with anemia, which is a normocytic anemia, I get I get my um, antennas up and start looking for conditions which are more sinister. And what are these conditions? Anemia of chronic disease, renal failure, leukemia, aplastic anemia, congenital hemolytic anemia, blood loss, autoimmune hemolytic anemia. So all these conditions lead to a increased uh, lead to normocytic picture with anemia. Now coming to hemolytic anemia, the normal lifespan of an RBC is 100 to 120 days, and daily loss of uh, RBC is approximately one percent. Marrow has a capacity to increase the production of RBCs by six to eight folds. And if your uh, RBC survival is reduced, then uh, it leads to, uh, it can lead to anemia if it outstrips the regenerative capacity of the marrow. And they account for nearly 5% of all anemias. Clinical presentation can be, uh, if there are two kinds of presentation. One is acute and chronic, and it also depends upon the severity of cell breakdown, the site of destruction, whether the destruction of the RBC is taking place intravascular or it is taking place extravascular. Hemodynamic anemia may be hereditary or it may be acquired. Hereditary examples are hemoglobinopathies, enzymopathies, and acquired are immune hemolytic anemia. Here I would like to stop and say that most important is to elicit the history of the patient and to do a proper clinical examination. And the clinical examination, especially in hemolytic anemias, also includes the clinical examination of the SIBs and the parents, especially, for example, in patients of uh, hereditary cirrhositis. Is you may come to uh, uh, a conclusion from the examination of the parents where you may find the liver, you may have a spleen, or you may have a history of gallbladder disease, etc. So all these things are very important. The history of, of the patient is very important. When the uh, patient developed the anemia, what age did he develop it, and so on and so forth. So that's how we have to look at it from the point of view. So one can classify hemolytic disorders into, two, uh, into four groups. One is hereditary intracorpuscular uh, defects, hereditary extracorpuscular defects, and acquired intracorpuscular and acquired extracorpuscular. So, what I mean to say from this is that the defects of hemolysis or defects in the, uh, you know, in the RBCs inside the RBCs could cause a hemolytic anemia, and some defects outside the RBCs or so, for example, antibodies against the RBCs could cause a hemolytic anemia. Coming to each end. So, in hereditary, usually it is intracuspular defects, which is there, family history of anemia, jaundice, cholelithiasis, splenectomy. And if you have to, you should get the CBC, retic count, and bilirubin set, estimation with the peripheral smear done in the SIB and the parents. Usually, intravascular uh, defects, oh, sorry, okay. Uh, with the lab approach, we have to see that there is an accelerated hemolysis or demonstrate accelerated hemolysis in the form of reticulocytosis, unconjugated hyperbilirubinemia, elevated LDH, and a reduced serum heptoglobin level. Intravascular, when it uh, occurs inside the blood vessel, they, it is usually microangiopathic or infection associated or toxic or chemical induced uh, hemolytic anemia. Extravascular is if you have an RBC coated with some uh, you know, uh, antibody and they are removed by the monocyte macrophage system of the spleen and liver, this can also lead to uh, an extravascular uh, destruction of the R. Then we have to, once we have done that, then we have to uh, uh, do tests to delineate the exact etiology. The lab test results may be, well, uh, you know, initiated by prior blood transfusion and or hematinic therapy. Now, remember that 
uh, we have always been taught that once a transfusion is given, you're in a patient of thalassemia major, your HPF goes down and it may be difficult to make a diagnosis. And even after two or three months, the HPF levels never come up to the level at which they were prior to transfusion. Now, presence of reticulocytosis suggests hemolysis. Unconjugated bilirubin increased also suggests that. Haptoglobin decreased. Urine hemocytrin may be present. Urine hemoglobin may be present. And serum LDH may be increased. Okay, uh, reticulocytosis and when the mean lifespan is reduced to less than 40 to 50 days, then you can develop anemia. More tests to defect, uh, detect less uh, severe shortening of the uh, RBC's lifespan are rarely needed in clinical practice. All patients with reticulocytosis and indirect bilirubin have a hemolytic disorder. Don't forget that a lot of our patients who get uh, hemoly uh, hemolytic anemia are taken specially to the gastroenterologist and they keep on doing LFT without looking at the reticulocyte because they find an uh, indirect happy bilirubin. So all those who have uh, examined such patients, remember that indirect hyperbilirubinemia is more likely to be a uh, problem with the hemolysis rather than that of the liver. Uh, now, in cases uh, you can, you may not find that much of reticulocytosis, you can have, still have, have hemolysis. Now, what does, why does it happen? For example, in patients of, uh, you know, thalassemia, you may not have that much of reticulocytosis, but you have the precursors of the reticulocyte in the form of nucleated RBCs, which come out, and then you have to take into consideration those. A classification, as I said, of uh, intravascular corpuscular defect is hereditary spherocytosis, elliptocytosis, stomatocytosis, thalassemias, hemoglobinopathies, CDA, uh, hereditary RBC enzymatic defects, B12 and folic acid deficiency, PNH, etc. And don't forget that severe iron deficiency can also cause a, a hemolysis. Extra corpus defects may be in the form of TTP, autoimmune hemolytic anemia, HUS, and in newborns like hemolytic disease of the newborn, or if you have, uh, you know, traumatic, which may be in the form of, uh, you know, prosthetic heart wells, etc. Chemicals and physical agents are also known to cause uh, extra corpuscular defect leading to uh, hemolysis. Infectious agents which can cause extra corpuscular defect and uh, hemolysis are malaria, toxoplasmosis, hepatitis, primary uh, atypical pneumonia, clostridial, hepatic and renal disease, CV, uh, collagen vascular disease, malignancies, transfusion of in, non incompatible blood, and cold agglutinin disease. Also. Now, what are the investigations which you do? Complete blood count, reticulocyte count, peripheral blood smear. A direct uh, or a direct uh, antiglobulin test, urinary hemocytrin biochemical test in the form of bilirubin, LDH, and haptoglobin. Although haptoglobin is uh, rarely available and it is not really needed. Uh, specific tests may include uh, you know, quantification of G6PD, pyrimidine kinase, and looking at the peripheral smear for a Heinz body preparation osmotic fragility and incubation osmotic fragility. Of course, nowadays, EMA test is also done, which is a dye-based test for uh, hereditary spherocytes. Screening for thalassemia and hemoglobinopathies. Test for PNH in the form of ham acid uh, hemolysis, sucrose lysis, and the presence uh, of CD55 and CD59. Uh, cluster designation uh, antigens. Antibody titer and thermal amplitude of the antibodies may be also looked at. Other tests uh, are bone marrow aspiration and a biopsy, uh, although they are rarely indicated, but whatever it is, if you have a uh, defect in production of the uh, you know, failure of the marrow or decreased production of the cells, then you may have to do it. And it is always prudent to do a biopsy when you are suspecting a 
uh, aplastic or hypoplastic anemia along with the aspirate because the actual uh, you know uh, cellularity estimate is only from a bone biopsy. The presence of thrombocytopenia, leukopenia is also an important area in which you may do a uh, biopsy when you have anemia. Viral titers in the form of uh, increased EB virus, cytomegalovirus, etc. can be done. BUN and creatinine levels are to be uh, looked at to assess renal function. I remember a 15-year-old girl who came to me with, uh, you know, uh, severe anemia, repetitive anemia. We admitted her and we were looking at the cause. And one, once I admitted her, the sister looked at the blood pressure and it was very, very high. And when uh, when we, uh, you know, when we got the report that the blood pressure was very high, we got the BUN and creatinine done. And lo and behold, the creatinine was 7.8 and her anemia was, her basic presentation of the chronic renal failure was because uh, in the form of anemia. And we also missed a diagnosis in the, uh, in the outpatients because we didn't take a, uh, you know, blood pressure. So that's very important. You should look at the collagen vascular uh, markers and the thyroid function tests also. Now, intravascular hemolysis can be due to a mismatched transfusion. It can be due to severe and extensive burns, PNH, Severe microangiopathic hemolysis, which means HUS, etc., uh, physical trauma, bacterial infections, parasitic infections, TTP, and uh, a cold antibody, autoimmune, uh, hemolytic anemia. Extravascular hemolysis can also be due to mismatched transfusions. We know that there are things known as delayed uh, transfusion reactions, which could be extravascular. Then uh, you can have hemoglobinopathies leading to extravascular hemolysis, hereditary spherocytosis, hypersplenism, hemolysis with liver disease. Now, what are reticulocytes? They are immature red cells and lack a nucleus. Circulate in blood for a day and then mature into a uh, RBC. They are they are almost 0.5 to 2 percent of the adults' uh, blood and 2 to 6 percent of the infants. Reticular mesh like uh, network of uh, ribosomal RNA uh, is there. That is why they are known as reticulocytes. And uh, you, they have a higher MCV, stain blue with normal Romanovsky stain, and uh, lead to uh, polychromatophilia. You have to calculate the corrected RBC count, uh, retic count, which may be lower or higher depending on the degree of anemia uh, and then only make an estimate of the production capacity of the bone marrow. Now, when, when do we suspect decreased production or what conditions do we expect uh, decreased production? One is diamond black pan anemia, <laughs> tankinese anemia, aplastic anemia and leukemia. These are examples of the physical stomata uh, uh, stigmata of uh, DMA, uh, DBA and Fankinese. Although in 25% of cases, you may not have any physical stigmata and your patient may still be a Fankinese patient. Increased losses are seen with in, uh, irritable bowel disease, polypi, uh, polyps, hemorrhoids, worm infestations, and poor surgical anastomotic leaks. Uh, these are some examples of the uh, polyp and the irritable bowel syndrome which you may have in some patients. Now, I, I'll go on to some cases to illustrate my, uh, you know, uh, the various conditions which you have. Seven-year-old boy presents with history of chronic jaundice. He has mild anemia. He is a mild, dull, and abdominal pain uh, on the left side of the abdomen. On examination, had pallor jaundice, and splenomegaly. What are the DDs? Can we have them on the... Dr. Ajay, can you look up, or Mipul, can you look up the, uh, the... Yes, sir. Chat box. I mean, nobody has posted anything. Okay, fine. So... The differentials are 
hemolytic anemia, extravascular hemolysis. So one is non-transfusion dependent thalassemia, as you say, in hemolytic anemia, membrane defects, uh, CDA, enzymatic defects, and chronic liver disease. These are some of the conditions. Although with the uh, indirect hyperbilirubinemia, chances of chronic liver disease goes down. So your patient had a hemoglobin of 7.2, ECV of 26.7, RBC count of 3.51, ELC 8,470, platelets are 2.57, MCV is 76.1, MCHC is 38, Bil uh, total bilirubin is uh, 1.8, and direct bilirubin is 0.4, which means that the patient has an indirect hyperbilirubinemia, and SGPT is 20. Now, what is your thought process on that? So this patient has a moderate anemia, has got a microcytic picture, but along with that, there is a, a hyperchromic picture. MCHC is very high, 38. So, and your, your patient has indirect hyperbilirubinemia with uh, no damage or sort of no damage to the liver. So uh, my thought process would be that this could be a case of hereditary spherocytosis where you have small uh, uh, sphere-like RBCs and the RBCs, their uh, membrane has been pinched away, uh, are having a high MCHC. And this is how the peripheral smear looked, at, uh, looked like. The RBCs do not have any central pallor and they are smaller than the uh, small lymphocyte. Retic count is 9%, and the patient has a hemolytic anemia. Now, case number two is two months old child presented to the emergency department, complaints of irritability, decreased appetite, failure to gain weight, and was operated for cleft lip after birth. Family history was non-contributory. Patient parents also noticed skin pallor, Pediatric consultation was sought. On examination, he was pale, had mild tachycardia. There, uh, the, there's no obvious skeletal abnormality. Systemic uh, examination was normal. No hepatosplenomegaly. CBC showed an MCV of 4.4, uh, MCV of 106, 5,400 count, 1.71 plate, uh, platelets. Biochemistry was normal. Infectious workup was negative. So, in essence, this patient has come to you with only anemia and a megalo uh, and a macrocytic picture, and is a two months old child. So, one has to look at causes which are more likely to be a congenital cause, or it could be a severe, uh, you know, B twelve deficiency in the mother leading to. B12 deficiency in the children. It's not unknown to have two months old child with megaloblastic anemia uh, uh, coming to you. Anyway, so retic count was 0.98%. Test in uh, biochemistry was normal and infection workup was also negative. Now, obviously, the, you'll have to do a marrow to find out what is the cause of anemia in this case because your retic count was 0.98%, which was uh, despite the hemoglobin being four, so it is very, very low. And if it is so low, then we have to do a bone marrow. And when we did the barrow, we found red cell precursors with other cell lines normal. As you can see from the previous slide, the HP was uh, the TLC was 5400 and platelets were 1.71. Uh, and the diagnosis of diamond black fund syndrome was made in this patient. Now, uh, DBA absolute, uh, you know, criteria are that you should have a normocytic or a macrocytic anemia. You should have reticulocytopenia, a normal cellular marrow with few erythroid uh, precursors or rarely erythroid precursors with maturation arrest. <laughs> the erythroplast should be less than 5%. Ancillary are that you may have a normal or increased platelets normal or decreased white cells, young age diagnosis, physical abnormalities may, see, may be seen, 
and others in, are increased HDF, EPO, RBC, ADA, and I antigen presence in uh, these patients. Uh, differential diagnosis by viral parvovirus B19 uh, viral infection. Uh, it can be transient erythroblastopenia of childhood, and that happens. Then you have a pallor, which is a gradual, uh, you know, onset in, you know, from one to four years. Eighty-five percent of the cases. You have a normocytic normocytic anemia with reticulocytopenia. Marrow shows erythroid hypoplasia in 60% of the cases, aplasia in 10% of the cases, and 30% cases you have a recovery picture. Spontaneous recovery occurs within four to eight uh, weeks, and there is usually no recurrence. Now, this is a 17-year-old girl with the uh, microcystic hypochromic anemia, low normal to normal keratin, very low serum iron and transferrin saturation. HPLC is normal, uh, bone marrow is normal, stool negative for blood uh, and uh, you know presence of uh, and is refractory to, to oral iron. And eight courses of oral iron had been given and there was no response to it. Uh, had high hepcidin levels, presence of TMPR, uh, TMPRs, uh, uh, RSS6 uh, mutation, and the final diagnosis was iron refractory, uh, iron deficiency, irida, what to call as irida, iron uh, refractory, iron deficiency anemia. So, friends, what I have done uh, today is given you an overview of diagnosis uh, of an approach to a patient of anemia. The approach can be uh, starting from a CBC, but the most important element is that you must do a, a proper history, a proper clinical examination, not only of the patient, but also of the SIBs and the parents if required, and then proceed ahead. And once you have made a diagnosis from the CBC, uh, then it is very easy to uh, focus on which area to uh, go, whether it's hemolysis or aplasia or deficiency disorder, which would cover nearly 99% of the uh, cases uh, of anemia which come to you. Thank you very much. So, Thank you, sir, uh, for your wonderful presentation. House is open for discussion. If any questions are there, you can post them in the question answer box or you can raise your hands. So it will make you uh, ask your question. Sir, uh, uh, can you read up uh, the messages in the chat box? Because my vision is not very good. And uh, uh, Sir, uh, the question you asked, there were cer certain answers like hemolytic anemia, extravascular hemolysis, hereditary spherocytosis, hemolytic anemia, thalintermedia, hemolytic anemia, hereditary spherocytosis, and megaloblastic anemia also in uh, DFA, DBA, and B12 deficiency at early, early age. Mm. So you have uh, uh, somebody raising their hand also. Yes, and there was one question, sir. Seven-year uh, case of thalassemia, uh, hepatosplenomegaly, hemoglobin not improving even after repeated transfusions. Work up for hemolysis is negative. What to suspect? Sir, so there are a uh, number of reasons why a patient of thalassemia does not respond uh, to medication or the hemoglobin drops quickly. One, for starting from the uh, point of view of the donor, if your donor is not good enough or does not have a good hemoglobin, then also you may not have an optimum rise of hemoglobin in these patients. Number two is that your patient may be having uh, what we call as uh, increased hemolysis uh, of the transfused RBCs, which could be due to uh, blood group mismatch. Now, blood group mismatch, I don't mean the O, ABO, or the RH distinct, but we may have minor blood group mismatch, and you may have a, uh, a fall in RBC uh, in the hemoglobin, which is much uh, more acute than what you would expect. The patient, if he has a significant spleen, the spleen could be the area where you have to look, for example, hypersplenism. Although it is known 
that the size of the spleen does not matter in the activity of the uh, spleen. But in th patients of thalassemia, the size a large spleen uh, is an indicator that you may have had hypersplenism. So when we are uh, doing an annual uh, review of our thalassemia patients also, we look at the total pack cell transfusion the last one year and look at it if the uh, pack cell is, uh, transfusion is uh, too much, for example, above 200 or so, then we have to look at it from the point of view of hypersplenism. So the causes can be multiple and one has to rule them out one by one. You have to do a uh, cross-matching, uh, which is uh, for minor groups also to rule out minor group uh, you know, mismatch. Sir, can I ask one, can I ask one question, sir? Sure. Thank you very strong. Yeah. Yes, sir. Thank, thank you, sir, Anupam, sir, for the wonderful presentation. My first question would be, uh, can you explain on macrocytosis and jaundice? Macrocytosis and jaundice. Microcytosis with the jaundice, with the jaundice, with the jaundice, or hyperbilirubinemia. Oh, uh, classical example is non-transfusion dependent thalassemia, uh, 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 in which you have microcytosis, you have uh, severe anisocytosis, and you can have jaundice uh, with indirect hyperbilirubinemia. Even in hereditary spherocytosis, you do not get. You may get microcytic anemia with jaundice. So there are a lot of examples of microcytosis with jaundice. Even no, in macrocytosis and jaundice. Macrocytosis and jaundice. Macro, macro. Okay, macrocytosis with macro. jaundice can occur with in, uh, megaloblastic anemia and folic acid deficiency, and also in autoimmune hemolytic anemia. You get macrocytosis because one or two RBCs may clump together. And although the deficiency is in autoimmune immunity, the effect is that the antibody coated the RPCs, this part of the membrane which is coated with the RB, uh, antibody is pinched away and mm -hmm. the size becomes smaller. But because of the presence of the antibodies, some of the RBCs clump together and they uh, are counted as single RBCs. Mm -hmm. So when we are talking about macrocytosis, uh, we can divide microcytosis also into uh, sort of uh, severe macrocytosis and macrocytosis with a uh, cell count of more than 150. I mean, when I say the cell count, cell size of more than 150. Classical example of uh, uh, autoimmune hemolytic anemia leading to clumping of the RBCs and leading to uh, you know, with hyperbilirubinemia in autoimmune hemolytic anemia, etc. So you can have uh, macrocytosis and hyperbilirubinemia. Sir, please stop sharing your screen, sir. Sir, one uh, more uh, question. One more question. Uh, sir, when will we suspect this poisons? Sir, on the top, there will be a button. Stop sharing. Yeah, that's good, sir. Sir, when will you suspect dyserythra poisons? Give me a second. Your voice is also not clear. So, so he is asking when you suspect dyserythra poisons. Dyserythra poisons. Okay, dyserythra poisons is suspected when you can. Uh, you your patient is not responding. Is having uh, hyperbilirubinemia. Is having anemia. And when you look at it, uh, peripheral smear, you may have some evidence of it in the peripheral smear as a, uh, you know, uh, in the peripheral smear. But the main, uh, you know, uh, diagnosis is from a, a marrow examination by a good pathologist. That's when your patient with hyperbilirubinemia, you have not been able to make a diagnosis of hemolytic anemia or the cause of the uh, hemolytic anemia. And then you look at it and your retics may or may not be high. And along with that, you do a marrow and you find these findings. Thank you, sir. Dr. Dr. Alka, please uh, ask your question. Please unmute and ask. Dr. Kalyaneshwar, you wanted to ask something? 
And so, uh, Dr. Anu has asked kindly explain the features of IRIDA. So, IRIDA is basically a diagnosis uh, of an iron deficiency anemia which is not responding to iron. Uh, and repeated ions. Once we have ruled out the other causes of iron deficiency or non-responsive iron deficiency, and we have made sure that there is a good compliance. Number two, absorption issues are not there in the form of uh, you know um, uh, celiac disease and other causes, and uh, uh, worm infestation is not there. Then uh, with repeated uh, you know um, uh, iron uh, courses, your patient still not responding, then we look at it from IR idea. Sir, how will severe iron deficiency produce hemolysis? Uh, it's a well-known thing that in severe iron deficiency, you can have hemolysis because of its effect on the cell membrane also. So you can have hemolysis because of that. Difference between iron deficiency anemia and thalassemia trait? I've already told you that in uh, the this problem occurs only when you have a mild iron deficiency anemia and uh, or thalassemia trait. If you have a moderate anemia, then the question of it being thalassemia trait goes out. It may be thalassemia trait, but it has to be along with that, it has to be something more than thalassemia trait. Now, in iron deficiency anemia, the fall in hemoglobin is concomitant with the fall in RBC count and the fall in the MCD. So, the amount of iron which falls, uh, hemoglobin which falls down, the same is the amount of uh, MCD which falls down and uh, the uh, RBC number. Whereas in iron deficiency uh, in thalassemia trait, the fall in hemoglobin is not concomitant to the fall in MCV. You have a fall in MCV, which is far more than the fall in uh, what you would expect with the fall of hemoglobin. And with that, you have a high or an increased RBC count. And based on that, you have what we call as discriminant functions to differentiate between iron deficiency and thalassemia trait. And the ultimate diagnosis is by doing an HPLC and finding an HPA2, which is more than 3.5% of the total amount, which is classical of uh, thalassemia trait. Sir, in case of a young infant, two months old, with high MCV of 108 femtoliters, should we check the mother's B12 levels also? So, I told you, case is exactly what I had discussed. And I said that in some of the patients, if your patient is... Uh, from uh, a malnourished uh, sort of mother is there and deficient in mother is there, definitely B12 deficiency could be the cause. And you can look at uh, the mother, especially to look at uh, B12 deficiency. But uh, in a well-to-do family, which, does, which has a good nutritional status, then we have to look at DBA as one of the causes. And so what is the cause of hemolysis in B12 deficiency? Sir, hemolysis is not B12 deficiency. It is dyserythropoiesis because your RBCs get. So, dyserythropoiesis leads to an increased, uh, you know, uh, destruction of RBCs. Yeah, yeah. So, even hypothyroidism can present with microcytosis uh, with jaundice? Sir, usually not. Uh, hypothyroidism usually presents with a macrocytic picture and a normocytic picture. Yes, you can have a mild jaundice along with it. But uh, microcytosis is rather rare in uh, uh, thyroid uh, problems. So, uh, Dr. Vaishnavi asks, a four-month-old child, uh, male child with pancytopenia with low retic count, no hemolysis and negative direct Coombs test, no blasts on peripheral smear, no organomegaly, or skeletal defects or dysmorphism, normal serum B12 levels and folate levels, but megaloblastic marrow, what are the possibilities? Marco, inherited bone marrow failures ke liye dekhna padega. Fanconi is very rare at four months, usually presents at four to eight years of age. But uh, we have to look at other causes of inherited bone marrow failure syndromes and then uh, take it on from there. Right. So, Dr. Benita has asked, sir, 12 year old girl with raised indirect bilirubin, indirect bilirubin. Increased retic count, 
raised uh, RDW and microcytosis with hemoglobin of 3. What can we suspect? Sir, pehle to, I, I think you have raised in a reticulocyte count, you have to correct the reticulocyte count. Karna. If you have 3 grams hemoglobin, if you have a 2% uh, retics, that is not actually raised. It is correction ke baad wo aajaga, almost uh, 0.3% per or 0.5% per. So mm -hmm. I would think of uh, megaloblastic anemia even in this case and rule out first uh, by doing a corrected retic count and then uh, looking at the peripheral smear and looking for other, uh, you know, uh, conditions or other uh, markers for megaloblastic anemia in the form of megapolis, etc. And, uh, you know, uh, so that is what I would look at. So we discussed this in the last session also, how to do a corrected uh, retic count. So please go back and uh, review that also. And how to treat uh, RN deficiency anemia not responding to RN therapy. I think we'll discuss in the further uh, discussions today's approach only. How common to have RN deficiency anemia purely due to nutritional deficiency without any underlying organic cause beyond five years of age? Very common. It is the commonest uh, sort of deficiency disorder which we see. And according to NFHS 5, uh, nearly 60% of our population is uh, anemic. And major chunk of it is iron deficiency anemia. Although 20% uh, of the anemic children are uh, anemic because of non-nutritional uh, uh, anemias, cause of non-nutritional anemias in the form of hemoglobinopathies, which include sickle, thalassemia, uh, in the form of uh, malaria, in the form of uh, uh, other conditions, anemia, chronic disease, etc., which could be... So we... Uh, this is a part of the anemia mukarak uh, program also, that point number six is uh, relates to non-nutritional anemias. Sir, Dr. Alka Yadav has asked, two years old child uh, with MH anemia, significant hepatosplenum megaly, uh, hemolytic facies. Dr. Alka, would you like to ask you a question? Are you there? Uh, please uh, unmute and speak. Dr. Alka? You will have to raise your uh, hand again because... Yeah. Huh. Please go ahead. Thank you so much for the opportunity, sir. Uh, actually, I want to ask regarding one patient uh, who was admitted with us, two-year-old child. He had a significant hepatosplenum megaly and hemolytic phases. So, initial anemia, most likely thalintermedia, but uh, the HPLC was negative. So, there was no uh, abnormal hemoglobin that was identified. We also went for B12 levels, which were also normal. And Thinking of there was a mild uh, lymphocytosis, so we go for a marrow also. That was also turned out to be normal. So we were not sure how to then approach further. So those are two years with immunetic facies with, uh, you know, uh, what was the retic count and the uh, uh, RBC? So the retic is not so much elevated. Absolute retic was around, uh, around 1 to 2 percent only. So, uh, you know, I, I would strongly veer towards uh, uh, CDA or uh, towards, uh, um, uh, you know, um, uh, what you call as, uh, uh, and look at the marrow more acutely and maybe, maybe a repeat a marrow also, because sometimes you may not get the proper diagnosis in first go. I've seen okay. so many patients of CDA and uh, from, uh, uh, and uh, your uh, MDS, etc., uh, uh, which the diagnosis has that, not been That made. child was uh, basically from uh, Bihar side. We were thinking of any uh, like chronic malaria also, but they, they, there was no evidence in management. Uh, you get, don't get a hemolytic facies with uh, uh, malaria and two years old child with that. Yeah, kind of yes, sir, yes, sir. That's why we were more of online anemias. So but, uh, uh, we didn't get any. Uh, look for CDA. 
my yes. my uh, thinking would be that you should look okay. for cda or, uh, okay okay uh, maybe dr alka you can send detailed reports to dr anupam sir they will share the email id and uh, we can okay sir definitely sir pass hai mera number bhi hoga ma'am ke paas ji ji sir ji uh right any other thing thank thank you so much sir welcome dr manoj kumar mehta is asked what is the cause of raised mcv but normal vit vitamin b12 and folic acid what could be the cause uh as said that uh, you know raised mcv can be number of uh, reasons it's just not megaloblastic anemia you can have aplastic anemia or hypoplastic anemia also causing raised uh, mcv so uh, you know look we have to look at the rdw and decide ki uh, does it come in the nutritional and hemolytic um, criteria with the help of rdw and then take it on from there so even your hypothyroidism can cause an increased R mcv macrocytic anemia with uh, a normal retic count so i uh, i i would look at it from that point of view look at the rdw and then proceed ahead accordingly and yeah, so dr sanju has asked how low can hemoglobin fall in iron deficiency you can have a hemoglobin of 3 4 grams also not not and that's not it can be uh, severe anemia leading to uh, chf also right most of the questions and uh, but if there are any still questions uh, you can uh, send us on the whatsapp and uh, sir will be happy to answer we will share sir's uh, email id and you can uh, ask the sir questions directly also thank you very much sir thank you thank you again uh, i request dr jigdish chandra sir to say a few words yeah uh, thank you actually uh, again very engrossing uh, session dr anupam is uh, master of pediatric hematology and uh, uh, everything has been covered and they in fact wide variety of questions came up some of them which have been covered last week and some of them which are going to be covered next week they all have been asked, asked. just one small comment i would like to make here regarding the jaundice associated with uh, hemolytic anemias uh, see in uh, the at the time of diagnosis am i heard properly Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. So, uh, at the time of diagnosis of say thalassemia-like conditions, you have some degree of uh, uh, hyperbil, maybe around two two point five, but not uh, more than that. Adequately managed, adequately transfused patients will not have persistent hyperbil. That is one. Second, uh, even in conditions like uh, hereditary sclerocytosis, etc., mostly compensated hemolysis is there. Whenever it, that is there, if the liver functions are otherwise normal the hyperbilirubinemia of uh, say 3 4 5 that's not something very usual so there had been instances when cases of uh, uh, suspected hemolytic anemias with jaundice had been referred to ilbs and they after ruling out uh, the liver diseases etc sent the cases to us and we diagnosed gilbert mutation in them so with hemolytic anemias if the bill of 4 5 6 is there always think of other etiologies particularly if lfts are normal and the the, the in say chronically transfused patients maybe the uh, the ferritin is normal which is not causing any liver injury to lead to hyperbil so uh, it's not only that uh, just just uh, hemolysis always causes uh, this maybe associated gilbert mutation is something and that is associated with the several of the hemolytic anemias including hs thalassemia and uh, uh, cda etc as well so that was the uh, one comment i would like to make thank you thank you sir thank you very much sir thank you sir so there is one more question i think we can answer that uh, later or right a 3 year old male with hemoglobin of 1.5 gram percent uh, total counts 2500 platelet 15000 mcv 116 no hepatosplenomegaly Patient is normal. Retic count three point five. Patient had received immediate blood transfusion and platelets. On uh, evaluation, HPLC E beta thalassemia. 
folic acid and B12 levels were normal. Uh, Dr. Jolly, would you like to ask this question? Would you like to ask personal? Can you raise your hand? Yeah. Uh, good morning, sir. Good morning. Uh -huh. Please go ahead. So actually this patient came to our emergency department. So patient was a uh, three years old boy. So he was very much irritable and immediately on uh, and very much pale. So there was no history of uh, any previous blood transfusion. So only three days history of fever, slight uh, uh, rise of temperature. And uh, there is this, uh, uh, as per patients, uh, parents, patient was uh, slightly uh, like irritable. Uh, there was no lethargic or anything like uh, thing they noticed earlier. So when we saw first, uh, he was so uh, pale. So immediately on emergency, so hemoglobin, we found it is a 1.5 gram percent. And so we took the blood sample and sent for uh, a CBC with PBS study. And actually we thought of it might be a case of leukemia. So a platelet to account was uh, also very low, but there was no key or any bleeding manifestation. And on further evaluation, next day we got that SPLC came out to be your E beta tel. The report was E beta telasemia, and uh, platelet count was also low. So we immediately given a, a blood transfusion. He received two blood transfusion. But after that, sir, there is no uh, previous history of blood transfusion. And his hemoglobin from 1.5 to after receiving two transfusion, it came out to be only five gram percent. Then gradually it raised to 15 percent, 15, uh, sorry, uh, 11, hemoglobin percent raised to 11. But within uh, two weeks of hospital stay, again, his, uh, he required blood transmission. Again, he, it uh, dropped. And his MCB and B12, uh, as it was uh, showing 116. So again, we repeated uh, thinking of uh, maybe megaloblastic. And bone marrow was showing uh, picture like uh, decrease and they were not uh, uh, mentioning it as a, your, uh, a plastic like picture, but uh, cell series were depressed. Uh, it was the comment was like that. So they had suggested to do the serum B12 folic acid uh, estimation. And they also came out to be uh, within normal range. One was your 186 and one has come 136 like that. And so I, we were confused, suppose it is a E-beta tail, so there was no pictures like your microcytosis and uh, his serity count were also not so high. And the child presented which there was no hepatosplenomegaly, but he has uh, on SPLC, his picture has come out as an E-beta tail. As in our part, this side, the Bruger and upper some part, this E disease or E trait is very common. So ethnic group <laughs> yeah. people. Okay, uh, one is that uh, E beta thalassemia is very common, and yes. uh, uh, and uh, you know its uh, phenotype may range from uh, what we call as thalassemia intermedia uh, to a full fledged thalassemia major kind of a phenotype. So you can have a thalassemia intermedia like a picture along with the thing. Now. Uh, as far as management of this case is concerned, I agree with you that a transfusion is required, but I would be very cautious in giving transfusions with a hemoglobin of 1.5. I would not venture beyond three ml per kilogram of packed cell in one go over five to six hours, four to five hours. Yes, so we had given a PCB only. We used so, here PCB. So I would, uh, you know, a, a from that point, Okay, now uh, coming to why macrocytosis, there could be a number of reasons for that. Uh, okay. A is that when there is hemolysis, you may outstrip the storage of B12 and folic acid in your body, and that may lead to macrocytosis uh, in some of these conditions. So one uh, one uh, you know condition is that, and uh, B12 of less than 200 is definitely. Uh, uh, 
a marker of a deficiency of B12 uh, in these patients. Uh, the presence of a repeat transfusion being needed 15 to 20 days later shows that this could be uh, a E beta alone because this. then there can be in hemolytic anemia, you can have parvo B19 virus infection also, which can lead to a maturation arrest in the marrow, and you can have a sudden fall. For example, if your patient was in intermedia and uh, uh, what we call as NTDT uh, now, then with a power B19, you may have, we may go into a, what we call as a hypoplastic or aplastic crisis, and that could also be the cause of this. Uh, any, so yeah. for vi parvovirus, we had evaluated, uh, it was uh, uh, not uh, present. Parvovirus was negative. So that's what I'm saying, that you have to rule out all the possibilities and look okay. at it. And if you, uh, you can have EBITA presenting like this also, not, not an issue at all. Dr. Chaudhary, I'll be sharing the email ID of sir, and maybe you can okay, send Okay, so I will, uh, still is, uh, his uh, B12 level was, uh, uh, it was some more than 236, I was, uh, sorry, I typed it wrongly, because mm -hmm. it came normal, so that's why it was in my question, like, uh, whether this B12 and folic acid uh, level change, get changes after blood transfusion, because we send that oh, yes. uh, samples. Oh, yes, uh, it, changes, it changes, it changes after blood transfusion. Yes, yes okay. absolutely. Because we so are, I would, I, would, I would say that a level of 236 after a blood transfusion is more indicative that probably the baseline level was much lesser. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank because you we very are much. getting uh, e thalassemia uh, cases, sir. E tel, some are only they are coming as a trait, but so much be transfusion dependent. Repeatedly, they, we need to transfuse them like the other uh, transfusion dependent thalassemia. But some they don't need a required. Yeah, that's so what I said. The phenotype is very, very, very okay. variable E beta thalassemia. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you once again, uh, Dr. Anupam Sadev, sir, sir, for such a wonderful presentation. And thank you all the delegates for joining in. So thank please you. be there on next Sunday also at 9 a.m. I will be starting in time as today. And thank you once again. Thank you very much.